name is Dr. Daniel Fox and I'm a licensed psychologist in the state of Texas and an expert in the area of personality disorders. And I've gotten a lot of requests recently to do a video on parenting with borderline personality disorder. So I thought I would make this video to try to answer some of those questions and help some folks that may be struggling with this issue. Um, throughout the video, you'll notice that I'm going to say BPD individuals. A lot of the research that has been done, and certainly um, there is a citation related to some of the information that I'm gonna be reporting here, and that is in the information section of the video, if you wanna check that out, that um, I'm gonna to refer to individuals with borderline personality disorders. Even though a lot of the research is on mothers, but I think fathers with borderline personality disorder deal with a lot of these same issues as well. So I wanna include both, okay? Um, so let's get started. First, uh, what the research shows is that there are higher rates of depression and drug and alcohol use in mothers or individuals with borderline personality disorder. In addition, um, individuals with borderline personality disorder are also likely to be solo parenting, so parenting without a partner. And as well, they are at a higher likelihood to feel overwhelmed, stressed, estranged, certainly disconnected and confused from, from their child. And I think that in working with some of my clients on some of these parenting issues is that we've noticed that their expectation is to be this particular parent. So when they're not and they don't meet that need, they sort of attack themselves and poorly define themselves as broken or inefficient and they use this to attack themselves, make them feel worse, make them overly cautious with in interacting with their child, uh, with, with their new baby, with, with whatever it may be. So we wanna talk about some of these specific issues we see with individuals or parents with borderline personality disorder, as well as what are some techniques that we can do? What are some techniques and suggestions I can give you um, to help overcome some of these issues? So let's talk about interaction style. When we talk about interaction style with parents with borderline personality disorder, we see that these parents tended to smile less, they touched and imitated their influence less, and played fewer games with their babies. And this could, could be because of that high degree of stress and expectation they have in themselves. Or maybe they just don't know how to interact and play with their babies. So it's important as well that they're instructed, informed on how to do this, how to play with the baby, how, um, how to interact with the baby so that, so that they're getting a proper interaction experience. And when we talk about uh, emotion recognition, so when we talk about emotion recognition, we know that this can be a big issue for a lot of folks that are diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, and that's just adult to adults. What about parents? Well, we find that uh, a lot of individuals that are diagnosed with borderline personality disorder uh, have difficulty accurately identifying infant emotions, like the little babies. They have difficulty sort of identifying those emotions. Now, they also tended to mislabel neutral emotions as sad. So they were quick to interpret a neutral emotion, so an emotion that would look rather blank or rather plain, and they interpret it as the baby or the child being sad as well as they tended to be very overprotective of the child. Now, I've heard this sense of overprotection in a lot of my clients, and they've said, I don't want my child to have the experiences that I have had as well. And I certainly understand that. And we talk about that, about appropriate boundaries and about different techniques that, that they can utilize. And we're gonna talk about some of those today so that as you're parenting, some parenting skills, but parenting skills geared towards folks with borderline personality disorder. Okay. And when we talk about activity structuring, I think that's important as well because play dates are important, structuring time with, with our child is important. So we see that those with borderline personality disorder, that they have greater difficulty structuring their children's activities. And that's in large part, if we go back to some of the things that I just mentioned, it's about that sense of overwhelm, that sense of disconnection, about um, setting up these different activities, whether it's play dates or different toys or different uh, interaction times, whatever they may be, and that gives these individuals that sense of being overwhelmed and uncertain, a lot of fear of making a mistake. So that's something that, that these individuals carry with them. And then they also tend to report higher levels of parenting stress, 
feelings of lower competence and it's a lower satisfaction overall of parenting. And I think, again, as I see these with, with my clients, it's this fear of being this type of parent, which is the perfect idealized parent, which isn't well defined in a lot of my clients, or maybe it's not in, with you as well. But instead, you notice all of the things that perhaps you're, you feel you're doing wrong, or all the mistakes that you're making as well. So you're very quick to see your negatives, and then we have this poorly defined ideal parent so where where do you fall you fall in a lot of conflict and a lot of sense of overwhelming uh feeling overwhelmed uh you perceive yourself as having lower self comp competence so th these are these are certainly issues well what can you do about it well let's let's get into it let's talk about what some some techniques right that, that you can use so if you have an infant for a baby you want to increase your interaction style this is by stroking the baby's tummy uh, during changing making eye contact with the baby and at first if you're not a big eye contact person um, try to to encourage yourself to to do this eye contact is is very important imagine if we were doing this video and instead of, of looking at the camera, I was looking over here. You wouldn't have the same degree of connection, right, with me. But when I look here, we have a sense of connection. Now, when, when our eyes meet, we actually release something in our brain called oxytocin. And oxytocin has been found to assist in attachment. So we want to keep that eye contact. You want to keep that eye contact with, with your baby, with your infant, right? When, you, when you're changing him or her, okay? You also say positive things to your baby, even if you're frustrated. Now, I've had a lot of clients that become overwhelmed and frustrated with everything that's involved in taking care of an infant. And they feel horrible when, when they say negative things to the baby or they regret having, having the child. And I think that for a lot of individuals, with or without borderline personality disorder, sometimes that, that they feel that way. But what I want you to do is I want you to be cognizant that when you're with the baby saying positive things in a, in a high-pitched tone, the babies will like that, they'll, they'll respond, um, you know, saying, good sweet baby, right? I'm gonna give you an example. Um, and you know, keeping that high pitched tone and the baby is very responsive, but while you're keeping that eye contact, you're connecting, you're having a positive experience with, with your baby, okay? Uh, you also wanna know when to play, okay? So the best time to play with your baby is when he or she is well rested and alert. It may not always be at the best time that is for you. And that's important to recognize. You may not feel like playing with your baby, but we're gonna talk about a, a nice sort of mindful, mindfulness walking technique that, that you can do and relaxation technique that you can do uh, to try to give yourself a little more energy, a little more so you can play with your baby when your baby is ready to play. Babies are not on our schedules. We have to be on our baby schedules. And I know that that's certainly hard, hard to do, uh, but it's important to play with your baby when they're well rested and they're alert because if not when when you're ready to play the, the baby may may not be and you may end up misinterpreting that as the baby not liking you as it the baby being sad the baby you know having other types of problems that may not actually be there you may miss be misinterpreting the situation and we certainly don't don't want to do that um, Now, when you're playing with your baby okay uh, use one or two toys right to avoid that overstimulation Okay, and disengagement. If you have too many toys right, go, going at your baby, your baby's gonna get cognitively overloaded and the baby's gonna shut down. It's gonna be like, uh, and that's gonna be too much. So choose one or two toys, right? Presumably, you know, your, your baby's favorite, whatever it is, and kind of clear, clear the space and just play with, with just those two. Because if you keep introducing new things, it becomes overwhelming and babies shut down. Right? Now, what about parents with borderline personality disorder who have teenagers okay so let's talk about some of those techniques now if you have a teenager you're parenting a teenager you want to be expressive right of your love for him or her saying i love you at various times uh, apologize when you make a mistake and you want to treat him or her with respect and how you want to be treated and i understand that sometimes we, we have the, this idea that because i'm your parent respect is gonna be bestowed to me. That's not really how respect works, and I bet if you think about perhaps your relationship with your parent, how much respect were you given? And if, you're, if kids and teenagers are not given respect, 
they're, they're not really willing just to pass it out. So we do sort of have to earn it, we have to model it, show them what that respect is. Please, thank yous, I love you, uh, understanding, teaching them patience, um, certainly being clear about rules and consequences, and follow through. Follow through is really important for, for teenagers. Now, you wanna make sure that if you're giving a consequence, that you can follow through, okay? So if, for example, I've, I've had clients who they work, and sometimes two jobs. So they'll ground their 17 year old child for something and they'll say, well, as soon as you come home from school, you know, off with, there's no computer, no phone, no anything, but they don't come home until eight o'clock. That's a hard follow through. So sometimes we, we have to be sure that if we're gonna implement consequences that we're able to do it, that it fits your schedule, the parent's schedule, okay? Um, also having these boundaries, all, and it's normal for teenagers to kind of push it a little bit, you know, and, and keep on trying it and pushing it and how far they can go. But you have to be firm and fair and clear about what, the, what those boundaries are. Some things um, you, you certainly want to, want to be cognizant of is avoid ultimatums, right? You want to explain your decision. Please don't, don't use the phrase, because I said so. Because what you're doing is, is that you're showing that that is actually a, a statement of, of disrespect, saying that you don't deserve for me to explain to you why I'm making this decision. There's very little engagement or intrinsic desire to follow through. Sometimes if we explain our situations and our feelings, even if we're not sure of what they are, if we explain that to our teenager, our teenager understands, okay, so this is what emotional confusion feels like. Mom or dad has emotional confusion. This is what this feels like, okay? And we know a lot of folks with borderline personality disorder have a difficult time identifying information, uh, identifying emotions. And so that, that really sort of illustrating that and using that as an example for your child to learn from is really powerful. And it can really bring you and, and your teenager and your child together and understanding that. Another thing is you have to be reasonable and flexible. You have to understand that, you know, as, as teenagers, as they start to age, they have greater demands and greater needs in their life, whether it's school or extracurricular activities or whatever it may be. So we want to be reasonable and flexible. If it's something you can't do, it's okay to explain that. Um, I've, I've had clients, like I said, who have two jobs, can't get home until 10 o'clock. And so they, they, they have told their child, I want you home after school not to go out with your friends and no friends over the house. And when, when the teenager says, well, why? because I said so. Instead of saying because you know, I feel safer when, when you're at home. I feel like you know, I can contact you and, and, you're, and you're at home. I feel like that, that you're in a safer place than out in the world with doing, doing who knows what or whatever that, that interest is. So it's important to explain that and be reasonable and flexible. Okay? Um, no name calling. Uh, I hear that a lot when I work with families I hear a lot of name calling and the parents will say some, some really hurtful things and the teenager or the child is right there. And you know that that child can hear that. And what that child does is internalizes that. And when they've internalized that, it becomes a scar, it can become an emotional scar and a hurt over the course of time. Think about perhaps in your life. Has your parent ever called you a name? Has your parent ever ever referred to you in a really derogatory way? And how was that for you? Well, we want to do things differently, okay? And doing that is part of watching these videos and learning different different techniques and strategies and having that flexibility, okay? Um, you want to check in with your child every day, okay? And this is an emotional check check in, right? How are they doing without judgment? If, they're, if they have a tendency to be depressed or a tendency to be sad, don't say, oh, you're always depressed, you're always sad. You know, try to understand where they're coming from. Try to talk about and process their sadness. And if it's something that's ongoing for a long period of time, I think going to a therapist with you and your child is a really good thing to do. It can be a really powerful bonding experience. Uh, I've seen that, it's a very, from a professional standpoint, it's a very rewarding experience to be a part of. Uh, but you really see both, both individuals grow. And it's, it's just, it's, it's a wonderful experience I think that, that they can have. Um, please praise, praise your, your teenager for what he or she can do. 
you know, uh, if they're good at school, praise them for it whenever they bring home a good grade. If they struggle in something, you know, and it's something that they want to do, like maybe they're, they're not really good at hockey and something that they, they want to keep trying, you know, you can praise them for the perseverance, for their endurance. Uh, for their desire to keep going, for whatever it may be, if it's art or dance or anything that it may that they might have that interest in. So we want to praise them for for what they're into, what they like, and what's positive. Praise the positive. Okay. And one of the most critical things when we're talking about and as we're parenting and we're raising people, this is one of the things as a parent myself that 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 I instilled in me very early that I've passed along, which is be clear about your expectations. And one of the things that I can tell you uh, is positive expectations lead to positive results. Negative expectations lead to negative results. And sometimes that, that, that may be hard. Sometimes kids are gonna falter. Sometimes kids are gonna struggle. Uh, I know even me as a teenager, uh, I certainly made some really bad choices and but I think that you know um, my, my parents kept a positive uh, expectation that I was going to be able to get out of it that I was going to be able to, to deal with these issues and grow beyond it and fortunately I, I, I was able to, to do that but po those positive expectations were something that was instilled in me I wanted to do well because I was perceived with the ability to do well Okay. So try to pass that along. Remember that those positive expectations equals positive results. Negative expectations equal negative results. Okay. Also, as a parent, you have to take care of yourself. That is a critical component. You can't give everything to your child. You, you can't. You want to, and I completely understand that, but you can't. You have to take care of yourself. You have to do different techniques to take care of yourself. And especially if you're, if you're working on growing beyond your borderline personality disorder with, with this issue, is this is something you have to pay attention to. These are these techniques you have to utilize every day that will help you get through the day. But they'll also help you be a more powerful parent, a more in control parent, and that's what we want. As you grow beyond your borderline personality disorder, you can be a more efficient, engaged, positive parent you can do that as well um, some other some other suggestions is also um, don't punish or set rules when you're angry uh, you want to be calm to teach your child calmness as well if you tend to overreact your child learns that overreacting is how I should respond and that can become their response their default habit or pattern and you don't want that because what happens is they end up responding that way to you that doesn't mean that if if they already are overreacting and having that that sense of of quick urgency response over the top responses that they can't unlearn that but you have to model that continually right um, as you know we all know that we learn from what we see not so much as to what we're told Okay, so don't, don't forget that as well. We want to model that, that good behavior. Okay? Be aware of those tendencies to, be, to see the negative in emotions and perspectives. And that's part of that borderline personality disorder. That, that borderline personality disorder wants to distort your view and interpretation. But as you grow beyond it, you're going to remove those lenses so that you see things much more clearer and you interpret the environment in a much more clear, accurate fashion. Okay? Um, so one of the things to do, if, if you find yourself really frustrated, whether it's with, it's with your baby or it's with your child, and so if you're a really frustrated parent, one of the great things to do is do a grounding technique. A grounding technique that I like, and that we're gonna go over here, is called mindful walking. Okay. So this is this is a, a terrific technique and I think you'll you'll really like it okay so what you're gonna do is to do mindful walking right you're gonna stand up straight but not too stiff right you don't want to do that right you're gonna stand up straight okay then you're gonna take off your shoes right you can take off your shoes and socks if you want that's a judgment call I'll let you make that call okay all right you're gonna walk barefoot and notice the feeling of the floor right is it carpet? Is it hardwood? Is it tile? Here in my office, uh, we actually have a tile floor. Uh, it's been very cold here in Texas. It's uh, January right now, and um, so it is cold, and I'm in my, in 
I'm wearing socks, I admit it, I admit it. So I can feel the cold of the floor, okay? I feel it on the bottom of my feet, all right? Now I wanna notice that if I was walking, all right, I feel my feet, each foot lifting, and I'm just focusing on, right, each step as it goes off the tile, onto the tile, off the tile, onto the tile. And that's all I'm gonna focus on. All right, if something comes into my mind, I'm gonna let it float out. That's mindfulness. If it floats in, we're gonna let it float out. If it floats in, we're gonna let it float out. And we just breathe. And we're gonna feel ourselves relaxed. I feel myself getting relaxed, All right? Okay, and then we're gonna get a sense of calm. And I feel that, All right? Going from my feet up to my legs, All right? going up throughout my body, and I'm gonna feel at peace and focused as I walk. You don't have to leave the house, right? If you have an infant, you, can't, you don't wanna leave, of course, an infant alone, but you're just walking, maybe in your living room or even in your baby's room, and you're just walking and focusing and relaxing, and that's the best time to make a decision. That's the best time to be clear, to remove those lenses of borderline personality disorder and see the world as a little clearer and it helps you make better decisions. Once you're mindful, then you can go back and you can reassess the situation and figure out what the best solution is and discuss it with your child. Okay? Um, it's, it's not uncommon, right? And it's actually very helpful to sit your child down talk about whatever whatever they've done or whatever situation they're in or whatever feelings they're having and work out and learn to brainstorm and problem solve those issues together. And sometimes if, if you're constantly hitting a wall and you're, you're struggling, that's again when, when a therapist or a mental health provider can be a, a lot of help, okay? Um, I really hope that, that you've, you've enjoyed this, this video. Uh, I'd love to hear any comments. I'd also love any parenting techniques that perhaps you use. If you wanted to leave that in the comments section, that would be great uh, for other people to read and benefit from, from your experience. Uh, please subscribe to, to the channel. So I, I, love, I love subscribers, they're great. So please subscribe. Uh, I hope this has been a benefit to you. Um, I really hope that, that you enjoyed it. Please uh, send any questions to me that, that you may have or put any comments. And thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it and take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.